All right, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, good. Uh, welcome, this is uh, using the editorially module uh, to improve accessibility in Drupal. And I have to apologize in advance. Um, I, the title of the module is misspelled on the, in, the, uh, in the brochure. Uh, so you're gonna wanna add the extra I. Um, come here, thank you. There, there's an I there that was, did not make it into uh, the, the title of the talk. I gave this talk also in uh, Asheville camp and I had it incorrectly done there. No one corrected me, so I blame the entire state of South Carolina uh, for that issue. Uh, so welcome to this talk. My name is Mark Casillas. I'm a Drupal Tech lead uh, for Canopy Studios. I've been doing Drupal for a while. If you want to reach out to me, uh, Marky at uh, canopy.com. I'm also Marky on all the Drupal spaces, Drupal Slack and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> we are hiring. We are constantly looking for uh, tech leads. Now, the irony of this is I'm giving this talk in Europe and we do only hire in the uh, North America uh, area. So if you're going to, if you're willing to travel, it's a great place. Um, so anyway, we're looking for that kind of stuff. Canopy is a great site. We, we do all sorts of great builds uh, and work with a lot of really good clients and whatnot. So please feel free uh, to apply and check us out. Um, I also do a thing called Alley Talks. What it is is a monthly accessibility talk. We do it online. Uh, on uh, It's on actually a YouTube live stream. Uh, this month's talk coming up on the 25th is uh, Aria Winning Sun, which I love that title. Um, and uh, if you want to check it out, it's Alley Talks. That's a one one y t l k s dot com, and uh, we will do it. And if you want to speak, we're always looking for speakers. Uh, so please uh, reach out if you have a topic that you'd like to talk about. Um, do want to talk about some stuff. I am part of the Drupal contrib uh, contribution, so we have some contribution opportunities coming up. Um, uh, throughout the, the rest of the week. Friday is the big contribution day, but if you want to tr attend one of the first time contributor workshops, we have a couple that are still coming up uh, for you to take a look at. This is my dog, Drew. I just have to do pictures of her. It's just how it works. All right, what we're gonna be talking about in this 20 minutes is uh, the editorially module, uh, which is spelt correctly in this one. Yay. Uh, there is, uh, no huh? Oh, well, there you go. Okay, mostly. Thank you for the QA. Um, you're five minutes late, but that's fine. Uh, I'm also going to talk about another module called the Accessibility Checklist Module. Uh, it's just real quick, it's, it's real easy to install, uh, and then we'll be done and we'll move on to DXP. So, um, real quick, another quick thing is a, an accessibility overview. I leave the sli uh, this slide blank because there are a lot of really great talks about accessibility. You're obviously in this room. You know about it. You know about the great features or the great reasons for it. Uh, six benefits of web accessibility. You know, you're avoiding the legal issues that are out there. You're re reaching more of the audience because there are so many uh, possible uh, uh, people who need accessibility assistance. Uh, you're building your positive PR, which marketing people really love and improving SEO. Uh, but you're increasing more so to me, and this is what I think is the usability of your website, making it easy for everybody uh, to, to get to your content and get to your data and whatever. And then, you know, writing higher quality code, it's hard to um, flub. The flub's not a good word. Anyway, it, it's, it's hard to mess with you, write crappy code. Uh, that's even a worse word. Anyway, um, there's a link here at the bottom where I got this information. They've got to go into a little bit more detail. Uh, but, you know, obviously we're all here to, uh, to discuss accessibility. We all know that it's good to use. Go see Amy June. Oh, her session's already over. Well, there's going to be another accessibility shot uh, that you can see. All right. So let's talk about the editorially module, which I think is misspelled there too. I don't know. And anyway, it's a, what it is is a check. Uh, it's a module that just sits on your uh, um, site, and for your editors, it'll show different things that are uh, possible issues for your site. It's already embedded in there. Um, it checks automatically, so the authors don't have to be taught. Uh, how to enable it, how to run uh, the Lighthouse 
how to do anything like that. It checks the rendered content, what's actually being shown on your uh, uh, page as well, and it'll give you little notices as to what kind of issues are, and I'll show you a quick demo uh, here in a couple seconds. Um, and it exclusively focuses on the content of a page because you can have your structure all uh, set up accessibly all day long, and if somebody comes in and edits a page and does something that throws that content off, you don't have, as a developer or uh, as a uh, project manager, you don't have the ability to control that kind of stuff. Um, it uses a project called the Sally Project, um, and what that does is a JavaScript uh, that goes back and checks, um, goes back and checks the, an accessibility checklist, one like we're show, gonna show you later, um, and that's all done through JavaScript. It's done automatically. It's not weighted heavy. And the other good thing about it is it's uh, only allow, you can set your permissions on it so not everybody can see it. Only your editors will, will see what's going on and whatnot. Um, here's a quick view of what, it, what it'll show. It'll give you uh, like um, little examples, uh, give you question marks as to if there's an issue. It'll actually show if something's an actual problem. Um, and then down here on the bottom, uh, in the corner, a little pop-up that gives you all the different issues that are detected and available to you uh, and how to address them, possibly. Uh, it's testing for text alternatives, image alternative images, uh, uh, ARIA uh, leads for your links, stuff like that. Uh, images with long file names, which get without alt text, actually get picked up as the alt text, and that's a, a kind of a debacle right there. Uh, image of, photo of, the, the bad kind of uh, uh, image or bad kind of alt text that people show off in there. Uh, it also does meaningful links, links without text, click here, read more, things like that. Things that you don't want to do, but people tend to in their writing because they don't know any better, especially without the, uh, the, the links uh, with the titles and stuff like that. Uh, links that open new windows without warning. Uh, definitely are, is one. Uh, document outline and structure, the H1 or the, uh, the, the titles that, that are in a row so that you don't have an H1 or multiple H1s. You know, the, uh, all your H elements are there for structure, not for prettiness. And people tend to forget about that. Tables without headers. All the things that, you know, again, these are accessibility things that we can learn about all day long, uh, but and set up for all day long, but if an editor goes in there and doesn't think about them, you'll never know until somebody calls it and complain. And then it does a bunch of quality assurance checks, caps locks, uh, links to PDFs without references, social media embeds, and all that other stuff. All this is uh, all done automatically again. Um, and uh, here I'll do kind of a, I've got a site here uh, with Drupal 10, and I've already got it set up. And editorially install, you know, you do your regular uh, composer uh, Drush, or excuse me, Composer Drupal editorially. And then in the front page, oh, you know, actually, sorry, I went to do the wrong way. I want to uninstall that. Security Drupal, cool. Um, because I wanted to show what it looks like before, so uninstall real quick. Go to the front page, and here's my pay front page real quick. It's got just some links, some stuff that I installed on, on Devil. Uh, it's smart trimmed. I use, I'm use i a maintainer of the smart trim module, so I use that just to, to knock it down. And also, uh, because I know the smart trim module right now has a, a, an accessibility issue that it picks up, um, so I can one day fix that. So going back to uh, installing it. Edit. Orally. Once that's installed, we can go back and take a look. And down here, you'll see there's a, a, a little uh, issue up here. You click on that, and it shows the different issues that are on there. We've got tags uh, that ha are out of uh, order. Actually, did I fix that then? Because the more link actually was a, an issue at one point and now that's gone. So, all right, but this actually pops it up for you. Yay, I fixed something. Anyway, um, 
So it actually will give you an, uh, the ability to change that. Now, the problem with this is this tags issue is actually part of Drupal core that needs to be addressed in your initial config. Uh, so this is not something that the actual editor would be able to fix, but I wanted to give you a reference as to what it looks like for you all uh, when, it, when it's going, at, going in there. It gives you a, the ability to see what your outline is and actually check, make sure that your links are all good. You know, you have your H2. There's no H1 on this page because there's no title on, this is just your basic out of the box bo uh, uh, Drupal install. But it shows that your, all your H2s uh, are in there. It'll show you all your uh, alternative text for your images which, you know, since this is all devil generated stuff, it's this great uh, pig Latin stuff uh, that's there. But it gives you an idea that it's there. And if for some reason your images do not have uh, the uh, alt text, it will show it and, and, and highlight it as well. Um, and then if you have any questions, it actually does the excessive uh, uh, assistive technologies and whatnot, uh, some description of what's going on. Um, and then you can close this back up, it's out of the way, but it sits there and persists uh, for you, uh, for your users of the website of your content uh, uh, people. Uh, configuration, actually, um, there's not much to it. Um, you know, it shows you can actually uh, go through and redo the, sle uh, the, the theme. Uh, there's some actual customized tests that you can update. Uh, so that you're actually checking for the right information. If the href is a PDF, it does a, a different thing. Um, how the results appear, you can actually change when the nodes are uh, created or changed, if it's uh, where the sh it shows in the corner and whatnot. And then you can actually customize your dashboard as well uh, with all this information um, in there. But that's uh, really all there is to this uh, module, which makes your life a lot easier. Um, and that is the editorially, uh, we'll go back into the slideshow. Um, the next thing I want to talk about was Alley Project Checklist. This is a module that's actually been created by Jim Birch, uh, who happens to be my boss, and I am not covering this module to do favor with him at all. Uh, but what it does is it uses uh, something called the Checklist Manifesto, uh, basically having your site set up you run through a checklist and that way you know that everything is uh, good to go before you release it into the wild. Um, and it, I could actually uh, show you an install on that. Um, so normally in the reports there's, uh, oh actually it's already in there, never mind. No, oh, no, it's not in there, good. Uh, go in there and extend and you can go uh, accessibility checklist, alley project checklist is what it's called, not accessibility project checklist. <laughs> cool. Um, once that's installed, you can actually go in here and in your checklist area, you have an alley project checklist. There are other ones that are in there uh, for a variety of checklists that are out there, but this is the only one I care about. Um, so it shows about your content, whether or not you're using plain language, kind of talks about how your speech is going, uh, make sure your uh, buttons and, and labels are good goes through all these different checklists and you can check them off yourself uh, to say that you've done this and verified them. Cool. Um, and then there are some automated checks that also happen as well. The video ones is, are a good one that, for you to uh, confirm that there's uh, captions in your presentations. Unlike what I did because I did a, a I was supposed to start captions on my uh, uh, slides, but I didn't. Sorry, Amy June. Uh, I'll apologize to her later. But also, uh, so you have your captions, you have some uh, the, the seizure triggers, the ability to turn off everything. And this module, what it does is it makes your life a lot easier because it goes through all these different accessibility things uh, that are out there uh, through the Alley project and just basically says, here's, uh, here's what you need to do. And also here is the rule, or not rule, but the standard that you're gonna wanna use and, and to verify that you're actually going through this uh, information and whatnot. So that's all there is to that. Um, so this also has a little bit of information about the uh, Alley project itself, success criteria and whatnot. Now, when I did this, oops, not share, 
learn how to click the right button. Slideshow. When I did this uh, talk in Asheville, it was an hour session. Uh, so as you can tell, this is a 20 minute session. I'm already blown through the entire thing. Uh, so I'm glad, can you imagine how much I had to uh, fill in there? Uh, are there any questions uh, out there that you would like to step up to the microphone for? Oh, we, got, we got a microphone. If you want to get on camera too, you can like come here. Um, does it also pick up uh, errors outside of the content area? Like mm -hmm. if you have a block maybe on the page, will it pick up issues there? It will pick up anything visible on the page, okay. so yes. Uh, whether or not, that, like that tag thing uh, that I was showing you, let me go back here, uh, on the front page, yes, leave site. This tag issue here, it's not the content of the page itself that's the problem. It's actually the structure of the way that this site is built. But it shows you that. And then you have the, 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 the ability for the editors to raise a flag and say, yes, please come fix this developer at this point. So. Any other questions? Uh, you mentioned a dashboard. Um, is there a dashboard that has um, a summary of all the issues across the website? Um, not, uh, that's actually more of the alley uh, checklist. The uh, editorially uh, content, is, it doesn't necessarily have a full dashboard. The dashboard that I'm discussing or mentioning is actually this, the small thing in the corner, uh, which, which is, shows the content of that current page. And that makes it more relevant to that particular editor or uh, you know, whoever's looking, looking that over. If you have one that's kind of just overall, oh, no, sorry. Actually, let me, I take that back. There is actually one. Um, where is it? Yeah, this content accessibility one actually will go through, and if you have, like, you can go through and dismiss alert. This will show the ones that are dismissed, or uh, thank you for bringing that up, the different types of issues that are there. So here's links with no accessible text. That's the one that we have on that front page that are nine of them. Um, I, I use the module, that's why I knew it was a... <laughs> thank you, I appreciate that. I knew that was a... Um, and then the different pages that have issue, this is just the front page. So if we go into the main uh, uh, sub page itself, there actually are two issues detected on this one, which is still once again with the uh, links and then a question about the manual check. And then you go back into the, uh, the page with the issue, it actually shows what those issues are. You can check out the issues found and everything like that. So yes, thank you very much for that. So. Any, any other questions? So the checklist project is linked to the dashboard that you mean? No, the checklist project is actually uh, linked to uh, the Alley uh, checklist itself, uh, which is an external site. And it's just basically a reference of the different uh, uh, standards that you should be looking for as you're going through there. And again, this is one thing. What we do at Canopy when we're standing up a site, we actually have a launch checklist that we make sure that, you know, whether or not uh, caching's turned on, whether or not production's turned on. And you just go through it, then you click, click this, you check it off, it actually, you save it, and it'll say that it's actually been checked and when it's uh, actually been completed, uh, let me, you know, by who, whoever completed it. That way we can have a detail of what's going on. We do that for launches accessibility, everything like that. Uh, just kind of, like I said, the, and if you haven't read the Checklist Manifesto, I do recommend it. It's a pretty decent read. I listened to it, to be honest with you, but uh, it's still a good listen. Um, but yeah. And for, because he didn't have the mic, I just realized the question was, uh, is, it, is the X Alley Project Checklist linked to the editorially module? And that is no. Any other questions? I actually filled my 20 minutes. And I'm very happy about it. So thank you very much. We're going to uh, switch up here, and then we'll go into uh, Drupal and DPX. DXP. DXP. I always get it wrong. And thank you very much.